Right, thank you. Uh, so today I want to talk about walking, uh, something that's really simple, but it changed my life in a lot of different ways. Uh, first, I'm going to cover some thoughts and stories from my walk across the US last year, and then uh, share how I solved a certain problem I ran into when I returned home from that trip, as well as issue you a bit of a challenge as well. Uh, so on February 26th of last year, I began the walk. And over a span of about seven and a half months, I walked in 14 states for a total of around 3,200 miles of walking. And this is a, um, the map of my route. Um, so the most common question I would get on the trip, as well as after, is why? Um, a lot of people seem curious as to what would motivate me to want to walk when there are other modes of transportation. And I remember one day in West Virginia when I was walking, a guy pulled his truck over to the side of the road and rolled his window down and asked me what I was doing. So I told him. And he just asked me, well, well wouldn't driving be faster? And I, I laughed, but I said, yeah, and it's right. And walking is a hard thing to understand. It's not efficient in terms of time at all. Um, and I always struggled with answering this question. Uh, and a lot of the trip, good part of it anyway, I really had no idea why I was even doing it, to be honest. I, uh, it was nothing more than an idea that wouldn't leave me alone until I did it, so I just had to. Now, with that being said, I did discover a lot of reasons along the way, um, with the first of these being that I really knew very little about my own country, and I didn't realize it until I started walking across it very slowly. And I'd grown up in Maine, had never been west of Pennsylvania, but I'd always wanted to travel the world and see other cultures when I knew nothing about home. And this bothered me, and it kind of gave me some resolve to walk and see it slowly. And I also wanted to prove my own negative expectations of people wrong. So going into the trip, I wasn't sure what to expect when it came to people, but I had kind of a negative outlook. I wasn't sure how people would treat me, if they'd be nice to me, because I was very vulnerable uh, walking alone on the road. Um, and so I walked, and I just hoped to see as many places as I could, meet as many people as I could, and it worked out great. And walking was the perfect way to accomplish what I wanted to. And it turned out you really don't miss much at three miles an hour. <laughs> um, so there are a few main benefits I think I got from the trip. Um, the first of these being I experienced an amazing sense of community wherever I went. And towns really took me in. Um, I was moving very slowly, and only spent, but only spending maybe one or two days in towns at the most. Um, but I still got a really strong sense of um, being where I was. And this is one of my favorite kind of quirky little small town America examples. Um, this is in the small town of French Lick, Indiana. And uh, this is at the Antique Hair Museum in downtown French Lick. And that's Tony. He's a great guy who runs the place. And I just kind of walked in there um, to check it out. And he's like, hey, I want to put some of your hair in my famous person hair jar. So I was like, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so this is, uh, that's Tony taking a little sniff of my hair and putting it in the jar. Um, that's just one of my favorite examples. But a lot of times I'd meet people just walking down the street, and then the next thing I know, I'm in their home with them and their family having a meal with an invitation to stay for a day or two. And this happened all the time. And people really welcomed me in. Fallon, Nevada is another example that I like a lot. It's home to Fallon Naval Air Force Base. It's where Top Gun School is for the Air Force. And Navy SEALs do training there as well. So I spent four days with two Navy SEALs there. And they told me about their deployments and shared stories and took me out to training ranges out in the desert. And I got to use night vision goggles. And they showed me how to mark targets with lasers and all this crazy stuff that I never thought I would get to do. But I like these examples because in military towns, I did military stuff. In farming towns, I did farming stuff. Uh, some towns, I got my hair put in jars. And <laughs> it was all different, but all the same at the same time. And it was like America as a whole was really my hometown. That's the way it felt. Um, another benefit I got was close connection with my environment. So I began walking on the East Coast at the tail end of winter. So I got to walk with several seasons as they changed, and I headed west. Um, I walked through the annual flooding along the Potomac River, which is where this photo was taken. And this is the trail I was walking on. It was under about two feet of 40 degree snow melt. It was very cold. Um, not one of the more pleasant connections with my environment that I had along the way. Uh, but eventually the flooding went down, and I made my way into the mountains, the Appalachians, and down into the Midwest for spring. And then the summer heat torched me like in Kansas and eastern Colorado. 
And then I felt fall coming as I went into the mountain and desert ranges of Nevada and climbed into the Sierra Nevadas once I reached California. And I was able to really predict weather really accurately, which is something I didn't expect at all. And I could kind of look at a storm cloud and tell if it was going to hit me a couple hours in advance. And it was very strange. And this just came from being outdoors 24 hours a day for months and months on end. Now, in terms of um, improved health and happiness, so I was at kind of a low point before the walk. And a lot of things in my life were kind of bad, and I was really unhappy. And walking really ended up saving me from this. And it was because of the forced slowness that walking provides. So I found myself alone with endless hours and weeks and months to think. And things can't be avoided when you do that. So eventually, I worked through a lot of my stuff and like found myself uh, very low stress levels, even in situations that normally have stressed me out a lot. Uh, physically, things were difficult at the beginning. And I could only walk maybe 10 miles in a day. And I had a lot of blisters and back and shoulder pain, and it was pretty miserable. Uh, but I kept going, and eventually that turned to like 15 miles a day, and then 20, and 25. And one day in Colorado, I walked over 41 miles, which is something I never thought I'd be capable of doing, ever. And this picture, uh, in case you were wondering, was kind of my unofficial halfway point in Kinsley, Kansas. Now, this isn't to say it's all good all the time on a walk across America. Uh, sometimes you have to sleep under bridges and walk in the snow and make your own shade in the desert on really hot days when there is none and eat ramen out of a coffee pot in a cheap motel room. But these are things I look back on really fondly now. So on October 15th, I found myself at Ocean Beach in San Francisco and I had run out of land to walk west on. And this was really uh, exciting. And I tell people a lot, it was like the best day of my life and the worst day at the same time. Because I was happy about what I'd accomplished, but I was dreading going home. And walking had been the only thing I really enjoyed doing. And I had made so much progress in my life in every area that I was nervous about losing that all when I found myself kind of right back where I started. Um, so I asked myself this question, which is how can I keep the momentum going? Um, and it was really obvious to just keep walking and make myself, uh, make walking a huge part of my life um, going on. So I sat down and kind of thought about this and set two simple goals, which were to uh, once a week walk where I would normally drive and also to go on a walk of some length every day. And I decided to really stick with these. And the goal with this was to kind of take the benefits I experienced on a continental scale, kind of shrink them down into one of my own neighborhood. And this ended up working really well. And the same three benefits that I found on the walk across America were really true about my own neighborhood. And I kind of felt like I was onto something, and I just kept walking every day. And in terms of community, I met neighbors I'd never met before, and I'd been living on the road, same road for 10 years. And this is a rural road. And there are houses near my house that I didn't even know were there. I'd just never taken the time to look and walk slowly. And that same kind of embarrassment I felt about not knowing my own country when I started the walk across the US was really new about, uh, true about my own hometown. Uh, in terms of environment, I missed the road a lot. But I would just um, go walking every day. And I got to watch the leaves change in the fall back in Maine, where I'm from, which is beautiful. And the leaves fell and snow came. And I got to see all this firsthand and not just out my window. And comparable level of enjoyment that I got while walking through the mountains in Colorado or the plains in Kansas, I was able to get on my own road. And it felt like a part of what was going on around me, which was really important. Um, my mental well-being was my biggest concern going home. And I got in the best shape of my life mentally and physically. And I didn't want to lose it. And walking was like hitting a reset button. Anytime I felt overwhelmed by anything, uh, by thinking about getting back to work or just being home, I'd go for a walk. And so that's how I kept the momentum going. And it is stupidly simple, and I, I know that. But that's kind of the point. That's something really as basic as walking can improve your life in a lot of ways. And I think we could all benefit from being more connected to where we live and where we're at and um, the people around us in our environment. So I want to return to the question of how to keep the momentum going real quick, because I think we're going to have to ask ourselves that after today. I'm going to hear a lot of amazing ideas. And I know I'm really inspired by a lot of things I've heard. Going home and doing nothing about that is a pretty big problem. Uh, but the good thing is that fighting back against that is really as easy as just starting and taking action. 
And the action I kind of want to encourage you to do is just to walk more. It's very simple. Um, who knows what you could find in your own neighborhood, in your own hometown, like I did. Um, and I bug my friends and family about this all the time, and they love it, yeah. Um, and you will see something good as a result if you walk more. And I think we live in a really fast-paced culture, and a lot of good comes from that, but a lot of bad does as well. And I've noticed, like, especially over the last couple of years, like a real push to simplicity. A lot of more people are talking about it, and you're seeing it in the mainstream media. And this, I think, shows that there's a lot of value in simple and deliberate activities, and walking is one of those. My friend John is a great example of this. So John walked across the country the year before I did, and that's how I know him. And he ran into the same kind of problems I did when he returned home and started a group called Walk to Connect, where he takes people on group walks throughout the Denver area. And I think when people show up for a Walk to Connect walk, they're apprehensive at first and they aren't sure what to expect and maybe just dragged there by a friend. Because, I mean, it's walking. Like, how amazing can it really be? And uh, I've been on several of these trips with this group. But when people go, they keep coming back again and again and again. And I've seen this. And they start going on long walks of their own and bringing friends with them on those. And it's something they didn't even think about before. It becomes a part of their life. And they just had to start. It's really that simple. So walking has a lot of applications. And that's what I think makes it so great and why I tell everybody about it. Uh, it's something simple and effective in a world that's getting increasingly complex. And it seems silly, but it took uh, a walk across America to get me to walk down my own street and pay attention to what was there and how great it really was. And I hope it doesn't take something that huge to get you to do the same. Uh, walking can be used for health, for exploration, for an escape. Uh, a walk can really be anything you need it to be. Thank you.